This video will show you how to connect to Databricks from FME for those brand new to either application. The FME platform is a no-code data integration solution supporting over 450 different formats. One of the new formats to FME 23 is Databricks Delta Lake. Databricks unifies your data, analytics, and AI on one cloud-based platform. Let's take a look at how we can read from a Databricks Delta Lake table in FME Workbench, which is the workflow authoring app that's part of FME Form. In FME Workbench, the easiest way to find the format you want is to just start typing the name on the canvas. Double-click the Databricks reader to add it to the canvas. If this is the first time you've added a Databricks reader, you'll need to set up a connection. From the Connection drop-down, choose Add Database Connection. Fill in your Databricks connection parameters. Server hostname is your Databricks workspace URL. Do not include HTTPS at the beginning. HTTP path can be found in your Databricks cluster configuration on the JDBC ODBC tab. FME supports both personal access tokens and named Databricks user accounts. We'll use a token in this example. Once all parameters are specified, click the ellipses next to Catalog to connect to Databricks and browse for the catalog you want to read from. Note that FME supports Databricks Unity Catalog. Click Test to make sure everything is valid, and then Save. The valid connection, and you can now click Parameters on the Reader dialog and browse for the schema and table you want to read. In this example, we're reading in a dataset of public art from Vancouver, Canada that has been obtained from the Vancouver Open Data Portal. Click OK to create the reader. Let's read some data from Databricks. First, make sure that feature caching is enabled. Feature caching lets you view data as it's read and transformed, so it's extremely helpful for authoring and testing your workspace. As a side note, in FME, you'll see the term feature a lot. If you're new to FME, a feature is the same as a record. From the drop-down beside Run, Make sure feature caching is checked, and then click Run. With feature caching on, we can see the data using Visual Preview. If you receive an error message, check the translation log. Now that we know how to read from Databricks, let's look at writing. In FME Workbench, I've added a clipper to spatially filter only the public art in downtown Vancouver. Neighborhood boundaries have also been obtained from the City of Vancouver Open Data Portal. Some of the art in our dataset doesn't have location geometry associated. As with most database readers in FME, you can enter an SQL statement to offload processing to Databricks, which can drastically improve your workspace's performance. In this example, I'm telling Databricks to only bring back the records that have geometry. Now let's write this data to a new table in Databricks. Type Databricks again on the canvas and double-click Databricks under Writers. The database writer also requires the installation of a package from the FME Hub. You'll be prompted to install the package the first time you add a Databricks writer. Fill in your Databricks writer connection parameters. Dataset is the full Databricks workspace URL, including HTTPS. Cluster ID can be found in the Databricks URL by clicking on the cluster. Again, both personal access tokens and named Databricks user accounts are supported. Type the name of the catalog you want to connect to. As mentioned earlier, the Databricks writer stages the data first for performance, so you will need to supply an Amazon S3 or Azure connection. If you're already working with S3 or Azure in FME, then you likely already have a connection you can use. If not, choose the service you are using and click Add Web Connection. For Azure, enter your account name and key. For Amazon S3, enter your access key ID, secret key, and region. We're using an Amazon S3 bucket in this example. Type the name of the S3 bucket where your data will be staged or your storage container if using Databricks on Azure. The Writer's Table definition type tells FME how to name the new table and what attributes or columns to use. 
Choose automatic so that we can provide a new table name and automatically set the attributes based on incoming features. This can always be changed later. Provide a table name. For the table qualifier, enter the Databricks schema name or accept the default. Dataset options let you specify the operation you want FME to execute and how to handle the table. Click OK to create the writer. Connect the writer to the rest of your workspace, in this case, an attribute manager, which is cleaning up the schema attributes prior to writing. Once connected, you can modify the schema that FME automatically detected. Click Run. We can see that the process has completed successfully. If the process fails, check your translation log. Our new table is in Databricks. To automate this workspace, for example, to run it on schedule, publish to FME flow. Thanks for watching.